Greetings Game Watchers, I'm Chris Capel and I've recently played Star Wars Battlefront, so here are my thoughts relayed to you. Now I'm pretty damn certain that Battlefront will have major technical issues for the first few days, possibly rendering it unplayable on PC, and I also won't be surprised if it feels lacking content wise compared to 2005's Battlefront 2, which offered classic and prequel trilogy battles, space battles, hero battles, and a large enough range of single player options to make the game enjoyable even if you never touch the online. Nevertheless though, it's still my most wanted game this year, because it looks like fun, authentic, next genny Star Wars. However, there is a side of Star Wars Battlefront that I know a lot of people are interested in but haven't heard much on, and that's the single player co-op side. Everyone's seen the Hoth battles now and yes, they look epic, but what about when you would just like to take on the whole Empire yourself? Or with a friend? At the moment, Dice and EA have only shown off missions which are what I played. The Tatooine mission is the main one that EA have shown off and it's indeed the one I played. Set in the canyons of the Skywalker homeworld, you play as one or two rebel soldiers evading the Empire. The mission was wave based. After a thankfully very brief cutscene, we were given a short opportunity to explore the level alongside a holographic chat with Admiral Akbar himself. I actually quite like how his lips aren't synced perfectly with his words to make him more puppet like, which is appropriate. After that we were treated to six progressively more difficult waves of Imperial forces to fight off in the rather than maze like canyons alongside occasional bonuses to find. That's basically it. Survive and kill everything shooting at you. I'm glad there was a few seconds before the first wave as it also allowed me to familiarise myself with the controls, which despite being forced to use a PS4 pad were simple. Shoot, zoom, sprint, jump, interact, crouch, accidentally blow up teammate all worked as you would expect from a modern shooter. There were a couple of things though that make Battlefront stand out a little. The most obvious one is a button to change between first and third person, which I'm sure people will be very pleased to hear. The other interesting addition is the use of ability cards, assigned to three separate buttons each. These can be chosen at the beginning, but the three I had assigned were homing vehicle only rocket launchers, personal shield and jetpack. The jetpack is a one-off boost that simply gives you a bigger jump, and only you have to jump and then press the separate assigned ability button, which is a little clunky, but simple to get used to. It doesn't send you up very high though, and I smashed into rock faces an inch from a ledge plenty of times while playing. All these abilities had cooldown timers, so I couldn't bounce with the jetpack all over the map. A fourth ability is obtainable from supply pods that start landing around wave 3, just as the offences begin to pick up. These pods land at a random location, have to be found, activated and then defended for about 20 seconds. After that, three floating Rebel Alliance symbols appear around the pod. A slightly immersion breaking gamey way to do it, but whatever, and each one gives a random one-off ability. You can only hold one of these at a time, so one player can't steal them all. These special abilities include Orbital Barrage, Team Shield, Thermal Detonators and a proper rocket launcher. It's interesting to note then that there are no grenades, RPGs or other explosives in Battlefront except as of these ability cards. The bigger maps will also include being able to command vehicles or hero characters as one-off abilities, but not in smaller maps like Tatooine. The map itself is all rock outcroppings and narrow areas, with just enough space and flatness to fit ATSTs in there but not have a gigantic battle or anything. It's an arena for sure, and without the jetpack to get up to higher areas it's a maze to get around. At one point a supply pod landed just above me but I messed up my jetpack leap and it took me ages to find a normal way up to the pod, by which point the next wave of Imperials was already upon me. There is a certain amount of terrain destruction, for example any cover that's not a mountain can probably be chipped away at by blaster fire, but nothing like Battlefield's Levolution. Graphically, audibly and stylistically though, this is Star Wars. The graphics are just right, with some wonderful explosions, perfect stormtroopers, a Star Destroyer hanging in the background. This is the next gen Star Wars experience I've wanted since LucasArts collapsed into a pool of its own managerial incompetence. Sound wise, things are just as amazing, with John Williams music blasting away just to annoy video streamers, the exact right type of blaster sound effect on regular guns compared to ATSDs, and perfect voice actors on Abmuratbar and the troopers lovely. Finally though, how does it play? Did I have fun? Well, yes, but I'm honestly not sure how long I will play it for. 
Guns are a little too accurate at long range, which I would guess allows more people to have fun playing it, but rather limits the skill factor. It'll be interesting to see what mouse and keyboard brings to the mix. The enemies leveled up nicely between waves, with basic stormtroopers making way to ones with shields, jetpacks, sharpshooters, and finally to the ATSTs. I personally enjoyed facing AI opponents because they actually behaved like stormtroopers, rather than human players strafing and jumping all over the place unnaturally. Which makes me a little sad that Battlefront doesn't have a proper single player campaign, despite DICE's spotty record in this department. Nevertheless, it was all a good slice of fun, and I can see myself playing offline a fair bit. I'm hoping the other missions aren't quite so predictable though, with the basic wave based setup hardly offering much excitement. At the very least, my fight on Tatooine has whetted my appetite for the main game, online and offline and I'll be sucking Star Wars Battlefront dry when it comes out on 19th of November. I just hope there'll be enough on offer to sustain me. Thanks for watching everyone, Chris Capel and Game Watcher, out. It's a trap!